Para fuera. Para la calle. The Florida Panthers defeat the Ottawa Senators 2-0 in Sunrise to sweep the season series against the Senators. Got two first period goals that was enough for the Panthers to come out with a win. Stolarz was outstanding. And the Panthers limit the times they went to the penalty box. Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into this Wednesday, April 10th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. I'm Ronda Velez from the Hockey News. If you follow me on X at Monoman12, follow the show account on X and Instagram at LO underscore FLA Panthers. And shout out to the everydayers who come back here and get your daily Florida Panthers fix. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKDOWNHL for $20 off your first purchase. You can find that all on Game Time. So the Florida Panthers, like we said, defeat the Ottawa Senators in a game that is really feel good. And that's a term that I've used once again when it comes to a game against the Ottawa Senators. A very familiar opponent where you dominated coming into this one, winning eight out of your last ten. And and six of the last eight by three or more goals and another multi goal win for the Florida Panthers and these games just continue to not be close between the Florida Panthers and the Ottawa Senators as Senators have a lot of questions going into the offseason as far as new coach what what what's going to go on in the direction and maybe time, maybe to move on on certain contracts uh, for for them in the offseason while the Florida Panthers taking care of business, and getting one step closer to clinching home ice for round one. But it is a Wednesday, which means it is a Winans Wednesday edition of the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast. Jacob Winans is back to break down this 2 to nothing win for the Florida Panthers over the Ottawa Senators. Jacob, welcome back on a victorious Winans Wednesday. Yeah, it's uh, always good to chat after a win. Um Games against Ottawa always seem to be exciting, even though that's not a good team on paper. It's a team that uh, tends to give the Panthers a good fight, uh, whether that's on the scoreboard or elsewhere. Um, but uh, yeah, it was a pretty eventful first period. I enjoyed it. And then after that, it was wonderfully uneventful hockey, which is exactly what you want to see from your team heading into the playoffs this time of year. Uh, no stupid stuff, no injuries. Um limiting the extracurriculars and just complete shutdown defense. Uh, couldn't be happier with the result tonight. It was exactly how I would hope they would be playing right now. Yeah, exactly what you hope that, that would, that they would be playing, especially when it comes to the Panthers just being so composed after the whistles. I mean, yeah, you, you, you think you see that when, when it comes to the Panthers and, and even for, for the centers, I mean, the, the two, the, the two fights that, the, that happened, Gadjevic and McEwen, one one that carried over from from a hit that happened in the very first matchup back in November on, that McEwen had on Matthew Kachuk. There was a, all, also another one where Nico Mikola uh, took a hit after in response to a hit on Tim Stutzla, Stutzla last week, and then Kevin Stenland going over um, over to uh, I believe it was Art and Zub uh, after he took a hit er, earlier, and then and then later on. So this was a big physical game, but nothing that was too out of control as far as how previous matchups have gone for the Florida Panthers. But really, when it comes to the Panthers, they're just really their ability to be composed and also ability to make some, uh, make, make just the, the, the play that you don't expect uh, for, for the Panthers. I mean, you think about the, the stretch pass from Stolarz to Anton Lindell on, while the Senators were, were down a man too and going on the change. And even Randy Muller brought it up in the, po- in the broadcast Saying that those penalty killers that the Ottawa Senators had were guys who were weren't even on for 15 seconds on the ice, and you're getting a little bit of a change, just a, a communication breakdown uh, for for Ottawa, and then Stolarz getting taken advantage of that. It's crazy. Stolarz has been part of a few uh, few um, uh, highlight reel goals 
uh, for the Panthers on assists. I mean, let's not forget January 28th against the New York Islanders. He has that secondary assist on OEL's game winner in three. Now that one against the uh, Ottawa Senators, which both of them game game winning goals uh, for 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 the Cats, which that that's all they needed there. And then Nick Cousins uh, after. After gaining the zone, uh, Nico Mikola whiffs, and then Nick Cousins finishes. And both of them, multiple multiple goals against the Senators in different matchups. Got to gotta feel great for the Panthers as far as the the depth scoring. Not going to the box as much, even though they did go to the box more than um, three times in in the in the game. But it's not as much as they have in previous weeks. There we saw games of seven, six, <laughs> like. Thankfully for the Panthers, it wasn't uh, giving their opposition power play time neither. Yeah, it was a. Uh, I, I, I want to call it a routine game. Uh, the guys really stuck to the, to the routine, stuck to the system. Um, didn't see a lot of the extracurricular stuff. There was a lot of composure after whistles. Uh, I thought that was super important and and kept the Panthers out of the box. And they drew some undisciplined penalties from Ottawa where uh, Ottawa lost their composure. Uh, you saw Brandstrom take a penalty that he probably didn't want to take. Uh, Ridley Gregg takes a penalty uh, prior to the fight with Nico Mikola with an extra hit. Uh, just some of those things that the Panthers sometimes get baited into. They weren't baited into it tonight. Uh, Ottawa was, and uh, that's, that's kind of the result you get. I, I'd still like to see the power play look a little better. Um, the puck movement was there. They, they didn't really capitalize it as, much as they could have uh, with the opportunities given. But, uh, but yeah, overall, can't really complain. Special teams was fine. Uh, the power play did okay. Uh, and, and just capitalizing on some stupid errors from Ottawa. That's what you want to see this time of year. Ottawa, uh, terrible line change on the penalty kill. Um, Panthers capitalize on that. There's uh, y- y- there's a, a couple breakdowns that Ottawa had that the Panthers got good chances out of. Um, that, that's what you like to see. Um and then, yeah, first period, it, it was a, a hotly contested first period. There were a couple of fights that, that seemed a little premeditated, some scores to settle. Uh, both teams step up, settle the scores, and then get on with the hockey game. Um, not not as many fireworks as you expect in the, the Kachuk versus Kachuk matchups, but uh, this time of year, we don't want any of that. We we want healthy bodies going into the playoffs, stay out of the nonsense, and and uh, play good, solid defense and, and keep everything between – between the whistles. And I, I thought the Panthers did a really good job of that tonight. Um, and, and when there was a response, it was, it was a clean response. Like Kevin, Kevin Stenland with the reverse hit on Zub following the slash, he doesn't get baited into a fight where he could get hurt, just throws a clean hit, sends his message and gets off the ice. I think, I think that's, that's exactly what you want right now. And uh, uh, definitely, definitely also happy with the depth scoring. Um, Nick Cousins tonight gets a goal. Anton Lundell again, those two guys play seem to play their best hockey this time of year. So that's really, really, really encouraging uh, as we head down the stretch. Yeah, and 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 for and for those two, just get it getting on the score sheet and and even on a night where the power play uh he, he, for for them only getting the one goal from Anton Lundell, but just the movement was just so well. Etulu Serain getting on that front multiple t- and, and rebounds. Sam Reinhardt also got multiple uh multiple opportunities up front too and even shorthanded the intercepting of passes closing the gap too for for the panthers i mean their their penalty code was just incredible although the last two uh periods especially in the middle frame the panthers were having a hard time getting their uh four check going uh and p- pucks a little bit behind their d uh too but also credit to the panthers too because their 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 communication as far as having a forward back when a d would jump on the play also eliminating the the odd man rushes for for uh, the Ottawa Senators too. You got to give credit because there's a, been a, 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 a few of those breakdowns uh, throughout the throughout the stretch that they the bad stretch that they were on. And when you think about through first the first 40 minutes, zero shots on goal from Brady Kachuk and Claude Drew. I mean that's that's a big win. And I mean Brady Kachuk had two incredible chances in the third period on on uh, on a, a mini breakaways too. Where Stolarz was still sharp in his position, using his big frame, and crazy how he wasn't even expected and, to be the starter. He it was yeah. Bob that was supposed to be, uh, um, and that was announced as the starter this morning. And and you know I'll say this on Stolarz too. I, I think it's a uh, pretty funny what what he's done with uh, with Ottawa this year because uh, seems seems something about the Senators brings out his uh, his inner his inner forward. Uh, we saw in, earlier in the season when everyone gets ejected. 
and the bench was empty. Anthony Stolar slides onto the bench with the rest of the skaters. And then tonight gets a, a primary assist on the game winning goal. I, I, I'm, I'm thinking Stolarz needs some forward minutes against Ottawa. He all he's missing is a goal right now. Uh, if Spencer Knight ends up being a, a black ace uh, for, for the Panthers, uh, maybe there's that possibility. And there's like a, maybe a, a big lead. Um, may, maybe highly unlikely still for, for, for that <laughs> to happen, but Hey, well, we can dream, he's right? Begging for it. He's begging for, for it for, for sure. <laughs> but we're going to transition over to segment number two, where we're going to discuss more about our three stars of the game and when we thought this game was won or lost. We're going to discuss that and more here on Locked On Florida Panthers Podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Indeed. And when you're drafting your fantasy fantasy team, do you ever wish you could handpick the best stars for your business team? If you're building for um, your talent roster, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills when you could do it all with Indeed. Find top talent with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like matching assessment and virtual interviews. Hate waiting? Indeed. U.S. data shows 80% of Indeed employers find quality candidates whose resume on Indeed matches their job description the moment they sponsor a job. Indeed knows when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications to that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Go to Indeed.com slash locked on. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you the can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube. Or, or, or the free Fire Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Back on this Wednesday, April 10th edition of the Locked On Florida Podcast, one again for me, the Locked On Florida Panthers Podcast, your first listen of the day here on a Wednesday, where the Florida Panthers defeat the Ottawa Senators by a final score of two to nothing to sweep the season series over the Sens. And Jacob, <laughs> Let, let's uh, go to our three stars of the game for the Panthers. Not And Stolar is going 24 of 24 on the night. And also with the primary assist, he has to be the, the first star of the game. No, no, couldn't not give it to him, especially and, – and credit to him with, with, uh, with how low event the, the second period was for still to – to still be in position to still create the saves and all and all and just be locked in for for him credit to him as far as that uh second start of the game is going to anton lundell loves to loves to score against the ottawa centers and it's funny because two of two of those those are just sharp angle shots that just he ends up roofing them against the the sends uh too so that is going to be second star of the night and also just great on the penalty kill nick and nick cousins is the third star also, how hard Nick Cousins was on the puck today. To, today also drew a penalty late in the third period uh, too. To um, in the middle in the middle of the period too to just take a lot of the breath out of the Ottawa Senators on 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 the night. There were so many times where you saw um, them just consistently shooting themselves in the foot. We talk we talk about young talent and how now they can make you pay at times, but just the amount of the lack of discipline that this team has still have a lot of work to do as far as like i said in the beginning of of the show but man and and as far as uh taking the air out of them that even that penalty for from uh brady kachuk at the end on gus Forza and the high stick too so many different penalties for them as far as as far as taking the air out of them and any hopes uh as far as that but your three stars uh jacob yeah so i'll start i, I think nick cousins is deserving of an honorable mention for me um, I, I think he had a very, very good game. Um, and it was a two-way game. He played both ways. Uh, really, really solid, high energy, high effort. It's what you want to see. And, and 
Uh, he's fitting in in the top six again, the way uh, the way he did last season in the in the playoff run. Uh, I don't think that's what the Panthers are going to end up starting the playoffs with, but it's such a luxury to have to be able to go to that line uh, in a in a time where you where you might really need it. Um, so he gets an honorable mention for me, as does Sam Bennett. I thought both of them were super productive, um, great on really hard on the puck. Sam Bennett steps in with a, some pretty good power play minutes. Uh, I thought he had a good game. My third star is going to go to Anton Lindell. Uh, I think he's playing some fantastic hockey right now. Uh, two-way game, killing penalties. Uh, he seems really confident. Um, he's he's especially defensively, uh, just putting a ton of pressure on on D men with the puck. And and now you're seeing the goal scoring start to show up. Um, which he, if you think about it, first half of the season he really really struggled to score goals. Second half of the season he's he's been on a on a twenty plus goal pace. Um, He's he's really he's really taken off with the goal scoring in the second half and and especially recently, uh, he seems to terrorize Ottawa and uh, yeah he's he's gonna be my third star, uh, my second star is Nico Mikola, uh, mm-hmm. he he had a, a nice assist uh, jump jumped up in the rush, uh, won a fight, um, drew a penalty on that same play uh, to draw the penalty then get right back up and win the fight is impressive but um, my main thing with Mikola tonight is uh, added responsibility. Um, Mm-hmm. OEL is out. Nico Mikola jumps up and, and plays with uh, Dmitry Kulikov. Big minutes, second pair. Um, and I thought he handled it really well. He, he was great defensively, blocked shots, won a fight, got an assist. Everything you, you can ask for for Mikola. And my first star, obviously, Anthony Stolarz. Uh, another shutout, uh, primary assist on the game-winning goal. Uh, it's, it's almost like a pitcher uh, when, a, when a pitcher pitches a shutout, but a, a complete game shutout, but also... Uh, gets an RBI, uh, which we don't really see that anymore uh, with the designated hitter. But uh, the old the old National League rules, where uh, where pitcher has to bat, uh, support themselves with an RBI. Uh, I, I think I think that's what Anthony Stellars did today. Gave himself some run support. Um, touchy subject though with our our South Florida fans. The Marlins have not been scoring a lot of runs lately. Um, or one in eleven. <laughs> one in eleven. It's not great, but. Uh, it's all right. That's that's why we have hockey. <laughs> and uh, full uh, full disclosure, Jacob is a Yankee fan, so uh, yeah, d- a definite a win. But DLC DLC don't did tell rob- the people that. Don't tell the yeah. people. <laughs> hey, DLC did rob Stanton of a home run today. So, uh, but Nico Mikola did. What, wanted what, wanted to mention. Uh, he had three block shots uh, on on the night too. So so four hits too. So credit to him as far as what he's done in, on both ends of the ice. Nick Cousins also got four hits. Sam, um, Sam Reinhart got three of them too. So also physicality was there for the Panthers uh, there. But the moment when I thought this game was won for the Panthers, part of me wanted to think about the 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 second goal by by the Panthers where where Nick Cousins was trailing the play and then he got it past the right side of Corpusalo. Honestly, the, where where both goals came to the right side of Corpus Allo, so I was thinking, shoot, shoot to his right side, to his blocker. That's where you're going to get uh, Jonas Corpus Allo on the night, uh, too. But my moment was when Panthers the penalty killed towards the end of the first period uh, for for them, and and then uh, and then Etu Lusterainen intercepts the puck, drives a little bit, gets gets a backhand sauce to uh, Kevin Stenland, and then he's just leaves the puck on the boards and the, and there's two Ottawa senators around uh Kevin Stenland trying to break the puck out of that corner and and Kevin Stenland is saying no the the Panthers get their the change necessary for them too uh, I mean Kevin Stenland was an animal on on the PK uh t- today of course that hit on the reverse hit on Zub that we mentioned too and 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 also Kevin Stenland I am saying this once again I want to see at least a one year extension for this man because this guy is so valuable what he does on the on the in the defensive zone for for the Cats so that was my moment when I thought this game was won how about you uh I second that on Stenland I think he is the perfect uh fourth line center I, I don't think I don't think you can really get better in a fourth line center than what you have in Kevin Stenlin, what he brings to the table. So please, please, Bill Zito, extend that man. Uh, keep him around. You know, he he's he's so valuable. Fill such an important role down there on the fourth line. You can slide up to the third here and there uh, when injuries happen. So I love mm-hmm. Kevin Stenlin. Um, moment where I, I thought the game was won. 
Um, I, I thought I, I also thought Nick Cousins goal could maybe go with that. But if I'm being completely honest, the way the Panthers have played uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit loose sometimes uh, in, in recent weeks, giving up a chance here and there. Um, and then also just being shorthanded defensively tonight. No Ekblad, no OEL. I didn't know necessarily if a two goal lead that early was going to completely shut the door. Uh, so I'd be lying if I said that was my moment. Uh, my moment where I felt the game was won, I actually noted, I, I took a note um, at the time. It was when the the Panthers made it to the second TV timeout of the second period. The whole first half of the second period, it was all Ottawa. It seemed like they yeah. were pushing. They were ready to, ready to break through, get back in the game. And then after that TV timeout, the, the Panthers really settled back in, took control back, um, played some really solid defense. And, and then at, at that point, really when the second period ended, still have your two goal lead. Uh, it, it was over uh, for me at that point. And Ottawa definitely got some good chances in the third period. They, they could have come back, uh, but I, I just didn't see it after, after that TV timeout in the second period, Panthers really settled in. And then when the second period ended, it's still two zero. Uh, the door was slammed shut at that point. Ottawa was, I, I felt like they, they had given all they could to get back in the game and the Panthers weren't letting them do it. So that that's my moment when I, I felt completely confident that the Panthers were getting out of this with the win. It seemed, the third period just seemed like a, a a question of whether or not they would end with a shutout, uh, but never felt like the, the game was in, in the balance at all in that third period. Yeah, and then protecting it up the middle, forcing them to dump it where the Panthers just, when it comes to their rate at which they win board battles too. That was really what it what what it came down to as far as how easy it was how simple it was for them to break it out of their zone, especially after the second TV timeout for 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 them, which really eased everything for for them for sure. But we're going to transition to segment number three, where we're going to discuss more about a new Panthers sponsorship that they have, along with the updated playoff picture. We're going to discuss that and more here on the Locked On. Florida Panthers podcast. Today's episode is to buy game time and game time is now an authorized ticket marketplace for major league baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier prices on the game time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch, The killer last minute deals all in prices view from your seat and their lowest, lowest price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. And if you're a Marlins fan who might consider going to a game when they do return home, not only are the tickets cheap, but you can even get more of a discount for, for, for game time. And with the playoffs already here for the Florida Panthers, you can use game time to get some discounted tickets because those tickets are definitely not going to come cheap for, for the play for the postseason for the Panthers as hopefully Game one will be somewhere around April 20th. So go to game time and use that, that promo promo code locked on NHL for $20 off to take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the app, create an account and use that code. Once again, locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Segment number three here on this Wednesday, April 10th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Thank you once again for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day here on a Wednesday. And also, if you haven't already, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't, because you'll see what you'll be able to see what I am holding in my hand as I as I am doing this episode i won't spoil it for you you're gonna have to go on the youtube channel to see it for yourself so so that that is a little bit of a an incentive to do so but jacob uh also uh the florida panthers have also partnered with hard rock bet uh as far as a new sponsor with the florida panthers there's gonna be some more in-person stuff next coming next year but more more of it's more going to be online related for the florida panthers come this season and can't be surprised with Hard Rock being legal in Florida and the Guitar Hotel not even being like a 15-minute drive from the arena. So we can't be surprised as far as as that, as far as the new sponsorship uh, for the Panthers. More corporate money that's going that's going to the Panthers. And hey, like I mentioned yesterday in, in on the show with the Panthers, 
and building Baptist Health Iceplex in Fort Lauderdale. What could that mean as far as the future of the Florida Panthers once their lease is up with Amherst Bank Arena in 2028? Discuss amongst yourselves, guys. But <laughs> playoff picture for the for the N- NHL now. Crazy, crazy, Jacob. The Panthers still have a small chance for the division still uh, with the Carolina Hurricanes defeating Boston Bruins 4-1, which uh, Sveshnikov scored on a Michigan uh, today. I, I, I don't know if you saw that. Uh, yeah. The Washington Capitals going to Detroit, defeat them 2-1, a big, big game in the in the, in the wildcard race, which Detroit's only chance, chance to – Get um get in is the wild card spot while the Capitals still have the Metro to get through. They can still get there through that. Philadelphia continues to fall nine to three against the against the Montreal Canadiens, and the one that is circled around the most in the world of the Florida Panthers is the Toronto Maple Leafs winning on the set of a back back jersey without Jack Hughes. Uh, looks like that Jack Hughes is going to be out for the remainder of the regular season and and actually the season for the New Jersey Devils as they are going to be falling short of uh, the postseason. So, so as far as this race, man, is, is, is this just continuing to be exciting? Even as the Florida Panthers are not one of those teams that are like in the position that they were last year. Yeah. I mean, uh, we're super fortunate that we're not sweating it out right now. uh, The way we were last year. Uh, I still remember how we, how we felt, uh, how we reacted when Buddy Robinson comes out of nowhere and uh, <laughs> scores for the Chicago Blackhawks to essentially kill the Pittsburgh Penguins and, and open the door for the Panthers to get in. And uh, we were we were this close to having a situation where the the Panthers were um, right down to the last game against Carolina, uh, who still had who still had something to play for, uh, and and the Panthers would have had to beat them to get in and ended up losing that game. Uh, but they had already clinched prior. Uh, who knows how that could have turned out? So we're we're very lucky that we're not in that situation again. Um, but it, it it's still entertaining. It's fun to watch because the the metro is so fascinating to me right now. Where uh, it seems like the teams in fighting for the last spot in the metro are almost fighting to not get in. Uh, so <laughs> that that group of teams has just been uh, just crazy losing streaks. Philly has forgotten how to play hockey. Uh, we knew we felt like they would run out of gas at some point. I didn't think it would be this bad. Um, they they can't get a save from anybody. Uh, they've they've forgotten how to play defense. He gave up nine goals to Montreal today. Um, Washington went on a on a crazy losing streak, then all of a sudden beats Detroit, who had been playing some pretty good hockey again. Uh, Pittsburgh has has been playing well, trying to squeak in, and uh, it. it it's still not out of the realm of possibility, a first round matchup Pittsburgh versus Carolina, which would be Jake Gensel against Pittsburgh uh, and mm-hmm. Michael Bunting against Carolina when they were just traded for each other, uh, where, where Pittsburgh is, is a seller. I, I can't even imagine the storylines if Pittsburgh somehow beats Carolina first round and, and Carolina makes that trade for Gensel and, and ends up losing to the team they traded him, uh, got him from it. There's so many potential storylines here. It's it's absolutely crazy, but um, the Atlantic Division is going to be nasty. Um, only one team out of Boston, Florida, Toronto, Tampa, only one team will survive past the second round, which is crazy to think about because that's four just Goliaths right now in the Eastern Conference, and only one of those four teams is going to survive the first two rounds. Um, you can say what you want about the playoff format, uh, I don't like it. I think it should be one through eight, but in the Panthers case, they'd still get Toronto first round, even in a one through eight format, uh, that'd mm-hmm. be the four or five. And, and, um, it, it doesn't really affect us, but, but, uh, to come out of the Atlantic division, someone it's, it's going to take a lot and, uh, it's exciting. It's exciting. The Panthers have as good a chance as anybody. And, uh, and if you think of it this way, uh, Panthers Maple Leafs on the other side, you're going to have Boston, Tampa, and, if the Panthers are to come out of the first round, one of your biggest problems will already be taken care of. Um, so it's it should be a lot of fun. Oh no, no, no doubt about that. Uh, but by the way, uh, no update on why it was Stolarz uh, in in that instead of Bobrovsky. I looked up every single beat writer that was there. None of them tweeted as far as that. But going so back Paul, to the... uh, yeah, I, I I was uh, 
if you if you saw any of the post game comments from Paul Maurice, he said he just messed up. He he misspoke. It was his explanation. Oh. He made it. Yeah, made a mistake uh, in announcing who it was going to be. I was looking for the same answers as you, and uh, I had just before hopping on to record, I saw his comments that uh, he accidentally said Bobrovsky, and and it was supposed to be Stolarz all day, and he misspoke. Oh. So yeah, he, he made fun go. of himself too. Yeah, we, he he was telling him to make sure to ask him twice next time because uh, he, he yeah he lost track of himself. Sometimes you can be a little scatterbrained when you have your head in different places at once uh, for for him. And I and I get it when you're the first when you're the coach you're the first one in last one out. I could de- definitely understand. I I I, I can only imagine the la- the hours of sleep or lack thereof that he gets as far as the, how stressful the job is. So oh, yeah. we could, we could expect a Sergey Bobrovsky in the net um, against the Columbus blue jackets, his former team and uh, the Panthers, maybe they'll honor uh, Jeff Rimmer, their former play by play guy who uh, will be calling his last game at Emirate bank arena. So definitely going to be a special night uh, moment there for the, for the Panthers uh, too. But man, what, what a night for, for the Panthers. They, and by the way, Magic number for home ice is now down to five. So still the Panthers, regardless of what's going on, it's still good to keep an eye on. They still are very much in control of their day. Uh, would just need to win the next two and for the Leafs to drop once, one point. Uh, and then you avoid that, that, uh, that deciding game 82 for Florida, game 81 for Toronto uh, there. So, Oh, big, big, big night for the Panthers. Big, big win. Uh, and just the fact that they're at home, uh, too, this, this gives them, this, this gives them hopefully confidence to carry that over to the first round as their home play has not, their road play has not always been replicated at home. But Jacob, I want to thank you so much for once again for, uh, joining me on this edition of the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast, where the Florida Panthers come out with a two nothing home win against the, Ottawa centers to sweep the season series. Any uh, parting words before we get out of here for the night? Um, aside from just letting you know, uh, follow me on X at Jacob one. It's eight. I will say definitely subscribe to the YouTube. Uh, you've got to see what Armando is holding, but also his awesome shirt tonight. I got to shout out the shirt you're wearing. I am Knuff. <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe if the uh, we can incentivize a Panthers playoff run, we can get you to perform. I'm just Ken. If they win a, a couple of rounds, we'll see. Uh, we'll see if we can get you to do that on the show. But uh, other than that, <laughs> <laughs> other than that, I've got. I don't have a whole lot else to say. Just happy with the W. Next next time, uh, there's pink at the rink. Uh, definitely wearing the shirt for sure. But <laughs> oh, Jacob, absolutely. Thank, thank thank you thank you so much, my friend, and I'll see you next time. Can't wait. Thanks. And if you like what you're hearing, please subscribe to the podcast to be notified every single time the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast jumps into your podcast feed. Don't forget to also subscribe to the other shows on the Locked On NHL Network, including Locked On NHL, Locked On Fantasy Hockey, Flip Livingstone, and Sue Roden, and Locked On NHL Prospects. Thank you once again for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. So I'm Armando Velez with Jacob Winans. And you've been listening to Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day.